Alrighty, guys, we're 14 and 1 in our last 15 crowd pleaser teasers on my website. And if you want to see a video breakdown of all of my personal plays here today, there's only one way to do that, and that's to join my full access, all inclusive chairman package on my website. But before we dive into some more of that, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to my MLB free pick video here today for Sunday, April 9th, 2023. Happy Easter Sunday to you. Hopefully you have a great day with your family or by yourself. Uh, I said that in my podcast earlier. Uh, maybe you're just going to be at the sports book all alone. Nothing wrong with that. You know, a little privacy. It's your day. Enjoy it. Of course, my name is Brock Page. I've been dishing out free sports picks right here on YouTube since 2016. I also sell my personal sports bets on patreon.com slash Brock Page. Once again, guys, I'm 14 and 1 of my last 15 crowd pleaser teasers on that website. And if you want to see a video breakdown of every single one of my personal plays here today, the only way you can do that is to join my full access, all inclusive chairman package. Not only do chairmen get access to the chairman podcast, you also get access to every single personal play of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. The math works out to be just $3.33 a day, cheaper than your daily cup of coffee. Now, I currently have over 540 members who are signed up and active on my website right now. And you may be wondering what the difference is between what I do here on YouTube and what I do on my website. Well, what I do here on YouTube is I'll handicap the entire slate of games in any given sport, side and total. What I do on my website is I actually share with you which one of these free plays on these videos that I'm actually betting on personally. And with that, guys, let's go ahead and dive into some free content. We're going to start off with the Reds at the Phillies, 105 Eastern first pitch. Philadelphia is minus 170, totals eight and a half. Taiwan Walker for Philadelphia, Connor Overton for Cincinnati. And even though Overton got knocked around a bit in his uh, opener, uh, strikeouts are still up for this Reds rotation since he's nearly in the top five in the league in strikeouts per nine. When it comes to offensive production, TJ Friedel's hitting 360 with an OPS in the thousands. Meanwhile, Tyler Stevenson's hitting 385 with a dozen total bases. Now they're facing Taiwan Walker for the Phils, who allowed four earned runs in just four plus innings. Now this Philly pitching staff is also in the bottom three in runs allowed. When it comes to the total, Walker saw five out of his last seven starts get over the number. Of course, uh, that dates back to last year. Meanwhile, Connor Overton went 3-1 of the over in his last four starts himself. Give me Cincinnati plus one and a half over eight and a half runs. Next game, Red Sox, Tigers, 110 p.m. East. Boston's minus 122, totals eight and a half. Cutter Crawford for Boston, Matthew Boyd for Detroit. Now Boyd allowed a couple of homers and walked three batters in just four-plus innings this year. Meanwhile, as a team, the Tigers lost their last three straight. And they allowed 28 total runs in those losses. Now they're facing a Boston lineup who's in the top five in run production. Rafael Devers is hitting 343 with four homers and an OPS in the thousands. Meanwhile, Adam Duvall is leading the majors in batting average, RBI, and OPS. When it comes to the total in this one, Boston saw six of eight ball games this season get over the number. Meanwhile, Detroit saw their last five straight get over the total themselves. Give me Boston minus 122 over eight and a half. Next ball game, A's Rays, 110 p.m. East. Tampa Bay is minus 310, totals eight runs. Drew Rasmussen for Tampa Bay, James Caprillion for Oakland. A cap, he gave up five earned runs and just five innings of work in his opener. Meanwhile, as a team, the A's lost six out of their last seven. And they score fewer runs a game than most clubs in the American League. And unfortunately, they're going to have to face Drew Rasmussen, who was dominant in his opener this year. Drew stuck out seven in just six innings of work, and he allowed zero runs on just two hits. And even if Rasmussen has an off day... This undefeated Tampa Bay lineup leads the league right now in runs per contest. Wander Franco, he's hitting 364 with three homers and a 1.144 OPS. Meanwhile, Randy Rosarena's got 20 total bases along with double-digit RBI. When it comes to the total, Tampa Bay could very well put this one over themselves. They're also 6-2 the over for the entire season. 
Meanwhile, Oakland saw six out of their last eight get over the total themselves. Give me Tampa Bay, minus one and a half, over eight. Next game, White Sox, Pirates, 135 East. Chicago's minus 124, totals eight and a half. Michael Kopech for Chicago, Johan Oviedo for Pittsburgh. And even though Ovi had a rough opening day, the Pirates have been playing some really good baseball. They're 4-1 in their last five outings. They averaged nearly seven runs per contest during that time frame. Brian Reynolds, he's hitting 424 with a league-best five home runs and 14 RBI. Meanwhile, Andrew McCutcheon's hitting 375 with seven walks and 14 total bases. Now they're taking on Michael Kopech, who was dreadful in his opening start this year. Uh, Kopech actually allowed a staggering five home runs, three walks, and seven earned runs in just four-plus innings of work. I mean, after the fourth homer, I don't know how you keep them in. Actually, after the uh, third, you may want to think of, about taking them out. But, uh, yeah, five home runs, that's crazy. And no real surprise here, guys. The Chicago pitching staff allows more runs per game than any other club in the bigs. Now, injury-wise, uh, Hendricks and Jimenez, they are still on the IL for Chicago. When it comes to the scoring, the Sox are 8-1 to the over for the entire season. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh saw three out of their last five get over the line. Give me the Pirates plus 104, over eight and a half. Next game, Yankees O's 135 East. New York's minus 160, totals eight. Nestor Cortez for New York, Tyler Wells for Baltimore. And out of five innings of work this year, Wells has faced 16 batters, and he's yet to allow a hit. And even if Wells gets knocked around here a little bit uh, today, he's backed by a Baltimore lineup. Uh, who can certainly keep themselves uh, in the game. The O's are currently a top three run-producing team right now. Adam Frazier is hitting 333 with 14 total bases. Meanwhile, Adley Rushman's hitting 313 with a handful of RBI as well. Now they're facing a Yankee squad on the other side who lost two out of their last four. And they continue to struggle with strikeouts at the plate. Uh, these guys are fanning more times per game than most clubs in the American League right now. And when it comes to the injury uh, report, it looks like uh, Donaldson and Bader are still on the IL for the Yankees. Now, total-wise, the Bombers are 5-3 and three to the under for the entire year. Meanwhile, Baltimore saw three out of their last five stay under the total themselves. Give me the Orioles, plus one and a half, under eight runs. Next game, Marlins-Mets, 1.40 p.m. East. The New York Mets are minus 155, totals eight runs. Carlos Carrasco for New York, Braxton Garrett for Miami. Now, Garrett's allowed a couple of earned runs and six hits over just three innings. Uh, this Miami's uh, pitching staff is also walking more batters a game than most clubs in the league. Certainly a, a vast difference than last year. You know, this was one of the... Uh, uh, best pitching staffs in the National League, at least in the first half of the season. Now, they're facing a Mets club who walks uh, five times a game at the plate on average themselves. So this is a team who's patient. Uh, they wait for pitches. They work the count. And uh, they'll take a free bag if it's given to them. And when it comes to making contact, well, there's only one other team who strikes out less than New York at the dish. Pete Alonso has got a 1.039 OPS along with five home runs. Meanwhile, Starling Marte is hitting 281 with 14 total bases. When it comes to the injury report, Jacob Stallings is battling a back injury for Miami. Uh, Joey Wendell still on the IL. When it comes to the total, four out of the Mets' last five meetings with the Marlins did stay under. Now, Miami's 6-3 and three to the under for the entire year themselves. Give the Mets minus 155, under 8. Next game, Mariners-Guardians, 140 p.m. East. Seattle's minus 130, totals eight runs. George Kirby for Seattle, Zach Plesak for Cleveland. And Plesak's allowed six earned runs in just one inning of work this year. And as a team, the Guardians lost three out of their last four. And they averaged just three runs a game offensively during that short span. And they're facing a Seattle pitching staff who's in the top 10 in strikeouts. And as a team, the M's won three out of their last four. They scored over six runs a game on average in those victories. A Eugenio Suarez, he's hitting 389 with seven RBI. Meanwhile, Ty France and Julio Rodriguez, they're batting in the 300s, uh, respectively, with over 40 total bases between the both of them. 
Now, total wise, George Kirby saw unders in five out of his last seven starts dating back the last year. Meanwhile, Cleveland's averages 2.6 runs a game in their last 10 meetings with Seattle. Give me the Mariners minus 130, under eight. Next matchup, Astros Twins, 210 Eastern first pitch. Houston's minus a buck 20, totals eight. Hunter Brown for the Strohs, Tyler Molly for Minnesota. Now, Molly's off to a real nice start for the Twins. He struck out seven in his season debut in just five innings of work, and he allowed only one earned run. Now, this Minnesota pitching staff has been absolutely dominant in opening week. They're allowing fewer runs a game than any other uh, pitching staff in baseball. Now, they're facing a Houston uh, lineup who strikes out more than most clubs in the, in the uh, American League. Meanwhile, as a team, the Astros did lose five out of their last six, and they're giving up more hits a game than any other uh, team in the league except for one. Now, injury-wise, uh, we're looking at Brantley and Altuve, who are uh, still out of the lineup for the Strohs, both guys on the IL. Meanwhile, for the Twins on the other side, uh, Joey Gallo's a little banged up. Keep an eye on him. He's not officially ruled out, uh, but um, might see him in a limited role, maybe a pinch hitter's role, uh, or maybe, uh, yeah. But anyway, total-wise, three out of Minnesota's last four did stay under. They're also five and three to the under for the entire season. Meanwhile, Houston saw six out of their last 10 meetings with Minnesota stay under the total as well. So if you're into historical trends, plenty of unders to go around. Give me the Twins plus a dollar under eight. Next ballgame, Cards, Brewers, 210 Eastern first pitch. Milwaukee's minus 155, totals nine. Freddie Peralta for the Brew Crew, Jake Woodford for St. Louis. Now, Woodford's coming off a dreadful season debut. He allowed three homers, three walks, and six earned runs, just four-plus innings of work. Meanwhile, as a team, the Cards lost four out of their last five, and they're currently in the bottom three in uh, the majors right now in hits allowed. Now, they're facing a Brewers lineup who's scoring more runs a game than any other club in the National League. Brian Anderson's got a 1.349 OPS, along with double-digit RBI. Meanwhile, Garrett Mitchell's got three home runs, 20 total bases, and an OPS in the thousands as well. And even if the Brewers don't swing it well, uh, they're in good hands with Freddie Peralta on the bump. Uh, Freddie is uh, he's allowed no earned runs uh, in his six-inning season debut. When it comes to the injury report, Paul DeYoung and Lars Newtbar, they are both on the IL for St. Louis. Now, total-wise, the Cards did see their last four straight stay under the number. They've also been held to just uh, 3.6 runs a game in their last 10 meetings with Milwaukee. As a matter of fact, no real surprise here. Seven out of those 10 meetings between these two clubs did fall under the number. So once again, if you're into historical trends, certainly want to think about that one there. Give me Milwaukee minus 155, under nine. Next contest, Rangers, Cubs, 2.20 Eastern start time. Chicago's minus a buck 20, totals eight and a half. Jamison Tyone for Chicago, John Gray for Texas. Now, Gray struck out seven in just six plus innings of work in his season debut. He also allowed just two runs on four hits in that outing. When it comes to offensive production, the Rangers are a top 10 scoring team. Now, Josh Young, he has a couple of homers and a handful of RBI. Meanwhile, Nathaniel Lowe, he has seven RBI and 14 total bases. Now, they're going up against Jamison Tyone, who uh, gave up three earned runs on seven hits in his last outing. Meanwhile, as a team, the Cubs did lose three out of their last six. And they allowed over six runs a game in those losses. Now, injury-wise, Seiya Suzuki is still on the IL for Chicago. If you uh, remember correctly, he was off to a red-hot uh, start last year for Chicago uh, in the uh, opening couple of weeks. Now, total-wise, the Cubs saw four out of their last five get over. Uh, Tyone also saw three out of his last five starts get over the total, of course. Once again, that dates back to last year. Give me Texas plus a dollar over eight and a half. Bless you. Bless you. Next game, Nationals, Rockies, 310 Eastern start time. Colorado's minus 145, totals 11 and a half. Ryan Feltner for Colorado, Chad Kuehl for Washington. Now, Kuehl allowed four in runs and a homer in his most recent outing. As Nats pitching staff's also in the bottom three in strikeouts. 
They're facing a Colorado team who averaged nearly five runs a game in their last 10 head-to-head meetings with Washington. Uh, C.J. Crone's got three homers and an OPS nearly in the thousands. Meanwhile, Charlie Blackman's hitting 313 with 15 total bases. Now, when it comes to the injury report, guys, you do want to keep an eye on uh, C.J. Crone. He has flu-like systems, uh, symptoms, excuse me. I guess the flu's back. Uh, we haven't seen the flu in two years, uh, but the flu is back. People get influenza now, and uh, he has flu-like symptoms right now. Meanwhile, for Washington, Dickerson, Pineda, and Keyboom, uh, they are still out for them. When it comes to the total, five out of Washington's last six did get over the total. Meanwhile, Colorado went four and three to the over in their last seven. Give me the Rockies minus 145 over 11 and a half. Next game, Royals, Giants, 405 East. San Francisco's minus 165, totals eight and a half. Anthony DiSclafani for San Francisco. Chris Bubich for Kansas City. Now, Bubi allowed just two runs and five innings of work. Now, this Kansas City pitching staff is also allowing fewer runs per game than most clubs in the American League. Now, they're facing a Giants lineup who leads the uh, league right now in strikeouts at the plate. Uh, they're fanning just about a dozen times a game at the dish. Meanwhile, as a team, San Francisco lost three out of their last four. They averaged only three runs a game in those losses. Now, injury-wise, Hanniger and Slate, uh, uh, yeah, uh, they're both still in the IL for the Giants. Uh, and when it comes to the total, five out of San Francisco's last seven did get over. Meanwhile, Anthony DiSclafani, he saw overs in his last four starts, once again, dating back to last year. Give me KC plus one and a half over eight and a hook. Next game, Blue Jays, Angels, 407 Eastern start time. The Angels are minus 129, totals nine and a half. Reed Detmers for the Angels, Yusei Kikuchi for Toronto. And even though the Koochmans looked good in his opener, strikeouts are down for this Blue Jay pitching staff. They're averaging fewer strikeouts a game than most clubs in the American League. And in their uh, last 10 contests against the Angels, these Blue Jays uh, pitchers are allowing over six runs per contest. Now, they're going to have to face an Angels team who won five out of their last seven, and uh, they have one of the more dangerous lineups in the AL West. Mike Trout is hitting 346 with three homers and a 1.297 OPS. Meanwhile, Shohei Otani is hitting 321 with six RBI and 17 total bases. And even if the bats go cold for some reason, pitcher Reed Detmers, he struck out seven batters in just 4.2 innings of work this year. Now, total-wise, five out of LA's last seven did get over the number. They've also averaged over six runs a game in their last 10 contests against Toronto. Give me the Angels minus 129 over nine and a half. Next contest, Dodgers, D-backs, 410 Eastern first pitch. The L.A. Dodgers are minus 136, totals nine and a half. Michael Grove for the Dodgers, Ryan Nelson for Arizona. Now Nelson got knocked around a bit in his season debut. He gave up three earned runs, a homer, and walked three batters in just five innings of work. And speaking of walks, this Arizona pitching staff is allowing more free passes a game than any other club in baseball. Now they're taking on a Dodger lineup who leads the majors in walks per nine. And no real shock here, guys. This is a top five run producing team. Freddie Freeman's hitting 429 with an OPS in the thousands. Meanwhile, teammate Will Smith, he's batting 370 uh, with three home runs and 11 RBI. Now, pitching wise, Dodgers are typically in good hands, and certainly uh, today uh, is no exception. This Dodger pitching staff allows fewer walks per nine than any other pitching staff in the bigs. When it comes to the total, three out of LA's last five did get over the number. Meanwhile, Arizona's gone six and three to the over for the entire year. Give me the Dodgers minus 136 over nine and a half. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final breakdown for the video. It's going to be in the Padres Braves game, 7 to 8 Eastern start time. Atlanta's minus a buck 17, totals nine. Dylan Dodd for the Braves, Seth Lugo for San Diego. And even though Lugo's had a good start to the season, the San Diego pitching staff has given up, given up four runs or more in all but two ball games this year. And no real shocker here, guys. The pods are in the bottom 10 in the hits allowed per game. 
Now they're facing a Braves team who's getting more runners on base than most clubs in the National League. Of course, uh, a lot of that is thanks to Matt Olson, who's hitting 361 with an OPS in the thousands. Meanwhile, Austin Riley is batting 313 with a couple of homers and seven runs batted in. Now, pitching-wise, Dylan Dodd, he's had a, he had a solid debut this year uh, for the Braves. He gave up just one earned run and in five innings of work with zero walks, no free passes. Now, this Braves pitching staff is also allowing fewer runs a game than most clubs in the National League. Now, when it comes to the number, four out of Atlanta's last five did fall under the total. Uh, the Braves are actually 6-3 and three to the under for the entire season, Give me Atlanta minus a buck 17 under nine. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our quick pick recap. Cincinnati Reds plus one and a half over eight and a hook. Boston Red Sox minus 122 over eight and a half. I'm 14 and one of my last 15 crowd pleaser teasers on my website. And if you want to see a video breakdown of every single one of my personal sports bets here today, games that I personally have my own action on, the only way to do that is to sign up for my full access, all-inclusive uh, chairman package on patreon.com slash Brock Page. Give me the Rays, minus one and a half, over eight. Pirates, plus 104, over eight and a half. Baltimore, plus one and a half, under eight. Mets, minus 155, under eight runs. Seattle, minus a buck, 30, under eight. Minnesota, plus a dollar, under eight runs. Milwaukee minus 155 under nine. Texas plus a dollar over eight and a half. Colorado minus 145 over 11 and a half. Kansas City plus one and a half over eight and a half runs. Angels minus a buck 29 over nine and a hook. LA Dodgers minus 136 over nine and a half runs. With my next and final pick for the video, give me the Braves minus 117 under nine.